Well, last week, last week we had, and a lot of you reacted to and were really interested in this interview, we talked to Shane Jones, uh, New Zealand first candidate, ex-Labour MP minister, um, and of course a senior member of New Zealand first during its 2017-2020 phase in coalition with the Labour government. And really interesting, actually, interview, because I, I get the feeling that New Zealand first has some life left in it but we are living in very fluid political times. There is a new poll out. It's a Horizon poll uh, provided exclusively to Stuff, which means it's a Labor Party poll that Stuff decided uh, that the Labor Party decided to leak the Stuff because they knew Stuff would write good things about it. So uh, this is based not on the poll itself, but I'm talking about the reportage of the poll in Stuff. It's a Horizon research poll, as I said, provided exclusively to Stuff that shows that in the five days after new Labour leader Chris Hipkins became Prime Minister, his party had the support had support of 30.8 of the population uh, of more than the 1,100 people polled. Um, and the poll result puts him ahead of National, with 47 seats in Parliament are based on this poll. Act, uh, National would have 39. Act 18, the Green Party would have 12 seats. Um... And New Zealand First was down in this poll. Act was up. I think the Greens were down. National were down. And looking generally at the political environment, since, of course, the massive policy dumpster fire that Hitkins announced last week, there is now real buzz that Labor's very carefully crafted change of leadership had nothing to do with anyone running out of gas. Uh, and their policy U-turns, and that's... The only thing you can call them, they're, they're just running away from stuff that was unpopular, may actually give them more than a fighting chance come polling day on October the 14th. And it would seem to me, when I look back at my discussion with Shane Jones last week, that many of the things that I think were he was railing against are now gone. So how does a party like New Zealand First, which has credibility and longevity in New Zealand politics, react to the de of um, the Labour Party? But more importantly, I think Shane is up north. Uh, we might get a weather report from him. Uh, morning, Shane. How are you? Yes, surrounded by gale-like winds, heaps of rain. However, I'm slightly inland near the Kitty Kitty Airport, and the waves have been pounding the coast. Uh, the power's been out for, for, uh, in many areas. Look, it's not the most severe weather that I personally have uh, endured, but for young families and uh, kids having to go to school and uh, workers in essential services, it's a hell of a time. All right, so you're not out and about today. It's hunker down at home? Yeah, yeah, no, no. There was a bad accident not long after Christmas, uh, a tangi took place near Kaitaia and some people, uh, relatively youngish, in their 40s, they went for a bit of a tiki tour in the middle of bad weather. A tree blew over and it killed two of them and one's still in hospital. So my advice, both to myself and anyone else in the north, park your rear end at home or somewhere safe and stay where you are. Yeah. Well, Shane, there's been a bit of a storm in politics too. It's called Chris Hipkins, and boy, has he felled some Labour Party policy since we last talked. And it would appear to me, from my assessment, that it is having an effect in terms of support for Labour and perhaps making it difficult for opposition parties or parties looking to get back into Parliament like New Zealand First. Uh, are you worried about the de wokeification and the dumpster policy dumpster fire that Labor has undertaken? Well, look, you can't deny the fact that uh, Chippy has run around with a tranquilizer gun. He's tranquilized a lot of the wild beasts that had led Labor uh, well and truly off the trodden path. Uh, whether or not they're gone forever, uh, forever, who knows? But. When I was a member many years ago of the Labour Party and I participated in the Labour Party leadership co uh, competition, I, I said people like me never left Labour. Labour left us. 
And I think Chippy, deep down, always believed, he probably never voted for me, but he always believed what I was saying was correct. Just think, just think very, very carefully over the last 25, 30 years, what have been the underlying pulses keeping um, Labour Labour's heart beating. Number one, it's been identity politics. To the point now that the party is driven by pronouns before it's driven by economic policy. And then think about the managerial, managerialism that's crept into the public service. There's about, oh, I'd say about 2.3 million people in New Zealand that are in the workforce. And about 15% of them, I'd say around about 15%, Oh, so just getting comfortable. Around about 15%, or well, certainly about four, um, 450,000, which is close to 19%, they work in the civil service. The majority work in central government. So the power base of Labour Party's ideas is no longer just in the, in the party. It's in the culture of the bureaucracy. And anyone wanting to take on big projects and change the nature of the country or change the culture of the country and change the institutional direction of the country, you're no longer just up uh, against the elements of the Labour Party and the Green Party, you're against also 19% of the New Zealand workforce, not all of whom are mad on this managerial woke, uh, Ngati wokeism, but that's uh, the legacy of the Labour Party and that's what you've got to take on as well. You would agree, though, that given where, and I, what did you say? We are proudly a nationalist uh, party. We're about, yeah, no, I, and I'm just wondering if, if Chris Hipkins hasn't moved Labour into your territory or territory that was largely uh, yours alone uh, by some of the things he's done in the last week, uh, and whether or not he doesn't also pose a serious political threat to the return of the New Zealand First to Parliament. Well, New Zealand first, I said the last discussion we had, are a cluster of economic nationalists, mm. economic um, patriots. And I don't want to compare myself to any of the other parties at this stage, but you've got to just ask yourself before you look to the future, what's the track record? And um, it's disappointing that we don't get a great deal of respect or recognition but virtually every project that Winston and I and our team had our hands on, we delivered. Whether it was the Provincial Growth Fund, whether it was the increase of 2.24 thousand additional policemen. And I think whilst there is the tranquilisation and an analgesic being uh, shoved into the uh, sensitive spots of various uh, vanity projects of the Labour Party, if you look back at what they've delivered, they're not a party of delivery. They are a party of vision. They are a party of great, grand ideas. But take, for example, the um, train set, which is going to be about $50 billion before you finish it in Auckland. That's a party that's not focused on delivery. And I think as the economic bite genuinely is felt throughout the uh, economy and in households, people are going to go through this period of time where... The old tranquilizer gun has been put on more offensive and egregious policies, and they're going to come back. Well, who can actually tame the bureaucracy? Yeah. Who can actually identify how we make citizens safer? I mean, there's something awful about the underculture that we've allowed to grow in five or six years over the last recent period. Truants, families, and kids believing they don't have to school, go to school. Gangs, they don't answer to the law like you and I do. If they want to hop on a, uh, a, a, a big bike ride, 150 of them, scare the bejesus out of ordinary God-fearing folks, they just do it. Mm. And there's something that's gone seriously wrong with the inability of either politicians or the state to deal with this underbelly yeah. of feral lawlessness. Yeah. And I'm telling you, mate, that as well as co-governance and fears about the ability to pay the groceries is going to be more important yeah. than analgesic politics yeah. of Chippy.